Uh, yeah, so I, I am Soraya from the Web3 Foundation in Switzerland. Me, myself, also live in Switzerland. Um, so the Web3 Foundation, uh, many people are always asking me what is actually the relationship between Polkadot and the Web3 Foundation. So I just want to talk about that briefly. Um, so Gavin Wood, which is uh, one of the co-founders of, uh, of Ethereum, uh, actually came up with the term Web3. Uh, back when he was working on the Polkadot white paper, and that's why he created the Web3 Foundation. And that's also the entity that um, organized the token sale back in 2017 for Polkadot. So this is why uh, the Web3 Foundation is very much um, focusing on, on uh, Polkadot technology and Web3. So uh, first of all, I want to give you uh, a quick overview of what to expect. So mostly I will be talking about Polkadot 1.0, so that's the current state of Polkadot. Um, then I will introduce you to some features that are upcoming in the near future, so still Polkadot 1.x. And uh, finally I will briefly mention uh, Polkadot 2.0, which is more in the distance and uh, more visionary. So Polkadot is actually more than just a blockchain because per, de uh, per definition it is, it is 45 blockchains currently, so it's a whole network of blockchains. And uh, the way it works is that uh, you have all these layer one blockchains that roll up to the something that we call the, the relay chain, so that's basically the main chain that connects all the parachains. So they just commit the, the state route to the relay chain. And then they get something that we call shared security. So all these layer ones, they actually don't need to have their, their own huge sets of validators. They just need like a handful of them because the relay chain is secure and because they roll up to the relay chain, the whole network is actually secured. Um, so that is made possible by something that is called substrate which is part of uh, the Polkadot SDK. So that's a, a framework for developing uh, app-specific blockchains uh, in Rust. So all these parachains actually um, are written using this, this framework. Uh, another thing you can do on, block, uh, on, on Polkadot, uh, you have cross-chain messaging. So uh, we have a format that is called XCM. Uh, currently, we have an average of 2,000 transactions um, per week, and there have been over half a million uh, of, of transactions in total that have been sent back and forth between different parachains, between parachains and the relay chain. And uh, so, all these parachains, uh, they, they do very uh, different things, like they can be DEXs, uh, there's one that focuses on uh, integrating Bitcoin, uh, there is DeFi stuff, um, real world assets, DIDs, uh, fundraising platforms, so all kind of different projects um, on this network. Uh, it has proven to be very scalable and reliable, and um, so there has been a, a project called the Dot Ordinals, in uh, the, the, that's like a Polkadot en encryption project. So similar to what was going on, or still is going on on, on Bitcoin. And during the peak in in like December 2023, uh, there have been uh, more than 1,000 transactions per second and millions of transactions per day. And um, the network did a good job managing it, so we didn't have any problems. And uh, it wasn't even enough for the uh, fee adjustment algorithm to kick in, which is supposed to kick in once the network gets like too digested. Yeah. So um, another thing that you can do on Polkadot is uh, OpenGov. So uh, OpenGov is our uh, on-chain governance system. Uh, it, it is the, arguably the world's largest and most decentralized DAO. So 
Uh, and there is also a treasury that is managed by this DAO. Currently, it holds around or more than 38 million dots. So that's currently uh, around 350 million US dollars. And uh, uh, yeah, whoever wants to contribute and be uh, compensated for that can hand in a proposal, so suggest uh, what they want to do, and then the community is going to vote on it uh, using their tokens. So uh, that has already been live for, for a while. Um, uh, that's also working great. And um, another thing, uh, another good use case for that is the technical fellowship. So those are a bunch of core developers, and they are actually getting paid through the treasury. So it's not like a centralized entity uh, paying them, and also they don't have to do this for free. Uh, so they get compensated by, by the network and uh, um, the treasury. And uh, they even have a sophisticated ranking system. So the, the more reputation they build, the more they contribute. Uh, they hire their rank goes and they hire the salary goes and that's all on chain that's transparent and uh, managed by the community through the uh, something that we call the collective system chain so we have this also these system chains uh, or common good chains and other system chains include the asset hub that is more concerned about uh, hosting assets and and bridging assets between different networks and uh, also the bridge hub. Um, right. Then uh, the next thing I want to talk about is forkless upgrades. So if you build on Polkadot, you will be able to do forkless upgrades. That's um, in contrast to other blockchains where you have to update your nodes with the new version of of uh, the node program. So that's not necessary on Polkadot because first of all, you have on-chain governance, which allows you to propose protocol changes. So you, will pro you would propose a new runtime uh, to be deployed. And then once the community approves it, it will be automatically rolled out on, on the validators. And from a technical point of view, that's possible because uh, Polkadot and all these parachains, they compile to a WASM binary. And this WASM binary is actually part of the blockchain state. So uh, because of that, once you vote, it will be automatically uh, installed onto the, so that the WASM binary is going to be replaced. And then the node already runs on the new version of the runtime. So that's a very powerful feature because also it, it avoids Forks, hard forks, which split, which split the community. Um, I guess the, the only downside I can see is that you cannot have like, or uh, I, there are a lot of frequent updates, so you're not going to have like huge launch parties for like a huge uh, fork that succeeds. But uh, I guess that's a good trade-off to make. And also we have the Kusama network. So Kusama is the the sister network of Polkadot. Uh, it's uh, more experimental than Polkadot, so one of the slogans associated with it is expect chaos. So uh, the delivery pipeline usually for parachains and Polkadot uh, is that first they would deploy on a testnet before they would then deploy in Kusama, which is the canary net. So, Hello? Oh, okay. Uh, so actually there is economical value on this network. It's not just uh, worthless token. So you can also make uh, economical uh, experiments, and it's not just limited to to like technical testing. So that's also something that is uh, quite unique to Polkadot, I think. Uh, then finally, if you choose to build on Substrate or the Polkadot SDK, but you do not want to leverage all these benefits. Uh, because maybe it doesn't fit your use case. Maybe you, you have some reason uh, to to do it, do it differently, and you don't need shared security. Then something you can do is you can run a solo chain. So then, of course, you will be responsible 
uh, for creating a consensus algorithm and a validator set that is um, safe enough for your users. But that's possible because this framework is, work is very flexible. So here's a list of uh, different projects that actually use Substrate. Uh, some of them are still work in progress. Some of them have been rolled out. Some of them have even uh, hundreds to billion dollars of uh, market cap evaluations. Yeah. So that's it for the first part. So this is what Polkadot currently is. In the next part, I'm going to introduce you to some upcoming features that are already being tested and uh, rolled out. So first of all, um, asynchronous backing. So backing is uh, the, the mechanism for rolling up the parachains to the relay chain. So, to, to connecting the, the two and, and making sure that it, it's safe. Currently, this is done in a synchronous way, and this process takes around 12, or it takes 12 seconds, actually. So because the block time on the relay chain is six seconds, it means that um, it takes two blocks to be secured. So this is uh, what I mean here by synchronous backing. So once the backing is over, you can start backing the, the next block. And with the new model, it's going to be possible to, uh, to do this asynchronously. So before actually the, that block is fully backed, you can already start backing the next block. So that way uh, we can double the throughput uh, because yeah, as you can see, it only takes, you can do two blocks in 12 seconds rather than one. And also what it allows us, or what it allows the, the nodes on the parachain side to do is they, um, they have four times more time. So instead of half a second, they now have four seconds due to several optimi optimizations to suggest the block that will be included in the relay chain. So if we multiply these two factors, we actually end up with eight times more block space. So this is how Polkadot is going to scale uh, better by uh, yeah, eight times in the, in the very near future. So this is being tested and being rolled out. Most of the code exists, but um, yeah, it's not fully live yet. And then another um, feature that is upcoming is Agile Core Time. So Core time is basically just the word for, for block space on Polkadot, right? So, um, right, the, the definition is that one core equals one parachain. So if you, as a chain, have one block, uh, sorry, one core all the time, then you can be secured all the time. Uh, in the existing setup, how it works is that um, you will have to go through an auction and you will have to win the uh, something called the par parachain auction that secures your connection to the relay chain for two years. But this is going to be much more flexible with the new model. So it's going to be possible to fractionalize the core into flexible time frames. So you can even just purchase, uh, you can either purchase in bulk for 28 days and then do another 28 days, or you can resell them into the market or purchase from these second market uh, sellers that purchase bulk core time. So that way you can buy up to just single usage even uh, course. So you, if you just want to uh, secure your parachain less often and make it cheaper but less secure as a trade-off, then that's something you can do. And it, it will allow the project to, to be much more flexible and it will lower the barrier of entry. So we, I expect uh, a lot of more projects to, to come to the Polkadot ecosystem due to this um, new feature and improvement. Uh, yeah, and the, so the marketplace is going to be NFT based. Um, yeah, we already ran, running out of time. So then we also have the beefy light client. So that's going to make it possible to bridge Polkadot to the Ethereum 
uh, network, and that is made possible by um, creating kind of a compatibility layer for the two networks to um, make their signature schemes compatible because they use different uh, block signing uh, algorithms. Um, there is an implementation called Snowbridge, so they are going in the process of building this bridge, and they're going to use this BFV light client that is just, yeah, it's a light client deployed on, on an Ethereum smart contract that then connects to the uh, Polkadot network. Um, so, and the Snowbridge side on the Polkadot side is going to live on the bridge hub. So, one of the system power chains that I mentioned earlier. Um, yeah, then just very quickly, so what does the future, the, like the distant future look like? Polkadot 2.0, uh, it basically uh, will be a, um, a ubiquitous computer that is running in a safe and decentralized way and that allows you to execute pretty much any program. And it's even possible to, to execute it over multiple blocks. And this is actually going to be, or that's the, the current vision at least. Uh, Jam is going to make that possible. Uh, that's something that, uh, a concept that, is co that was introduced by Gavin Wood last week at Sub-Zero in Bangkok. So that's, it's pretty fresh, a uh, very fresh idea. Um, but yeah, I don't really have time to, to go much deeper into this, unfortunately. If you want to learn more about this, then we have uh, RFCs. And the fellowship is mostly maintaining them, but everybody's welcome to, to contribute. So you can check this out um, over here. I will also share um, a QR code with the um, link to the slides later. So finally, last slide, um, how can you contribute? So we have different funding programs. The Decentralized Futures program, it runs until the end of June this year. So it's a limited amount of time only. And it covers around 65 million of funding uh, in fiat and DOT. And then we also have the on-chain treasury, as mentioned earlier. Um, yeah, $350 million there, in, denominated in DOT only. And then we have the W3F grants that has been around already for like five years. Uh, we have signed over 600 grants. Um, that program is denominated in, in fiat, so not in DOT. And uh, it focuses only on technical implementations, open source implementations, whereas the other two programs, or I mean the Treasury is not a, really a program, but the other two funding mechanisms, they are more versatile, so, so uh, different kind of projects can be supported there. Uh, if you want to learn more and like get educated about Polkadot, and uh, yeah, there is a EDX course, and there's also the Polkadot Blockchain Academy that uh, took place in uh, multiple times already. This year it was in January in Hong Kong, and then the next edition is going to be in Singapore in May and June. Uh, so uh, there, the students learn everything they need to to start building on Polkadot. And then we have some other programs that help with like decentralizing the community. So the decentralized voices is. Uh, a program to to give to amplify the voices of smaller dot holders that are very engaged and motivated in the community, and it's very similar for the thousand validators program. So that's also for people who do not necessarily have like huge amounts of funds to to uh, run their own validators and have a huge stake. So that's how people uh, can support it there. Okay, so with that, thanks a lot for um, your yeah, attention. Thank you. So, so we have some time for questions, if anyone has anything to ask. Here's one. Hi, uh, thank you, Nazrin. Um, so Kusama, that's pretty unique, right, with how Polkadot approaches things, and it's been running for some time. Um, so what are your reflections on having this incentivized cannery network? 
Um, would you change anything about it? And uh, what has been great about it so far? Uh, you mean just in a, in, from a macro point of view, yes, right? Yes. Yeah. I, I think so. The honestly, the the, um, the auction model to to get this parachain slot, it it was kind of difficult for smaller projects to build on Polkadot because you had to have a lot of stakes. So some of in some of these auctions, these slots actually sold for more than one million dollars or multiple million dollars. So of course, not everybody has that kind of money, right? And with Agile Core Time, we can uh, make sure that pretty much everybody can build on Polkadot. So uh, obviously there is a trade-off because you compromise on security if you, well, if, if you, at least if you choose to not um, secure on every block, but I think it will massively lower the, the barrier of entry for smaller projects, yeah. Okay, does that mean that with Agile Core Time, Kusama is slightly less necessary? Um, I wouldn't think so because it's kind of the playground, right, to, to battle test the code bef and also incentives before they're going to be deployed on Polkadot. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do we have any other questions from the crowd? All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you so much.